I gather some of Minecraft's most talented players to design and build an impenetrable fortress to defend a crystal. I split them into two teams and then made them battle up against each other to see whose fortress was better. Whoever has their crystal broken first loses. Welcome to Minecraft Castle Battle. Meet Team A, led by none other than Master Ugwe, who can only be described as a jack of all trades. He is one of the most successful players on my own Anarchy server, with many impressive projects under his belt. He has made giant world leaders, towering farms, incredible builds, and vast infrastructure projects pushing the limits of vanilla Minecraft. All of this is even more impressive when you realize that you get banned for a month if you die once. Needless to say, he is incredibly talented. And meet Team B, led by Mastermind Prison Builder and Escapist, Canadian. He has made some of Minecraft's most elaborate and effective prisons designed to keep everything contained in the prison as secure as possible, whether it's a player or not. When it comes to keeping someone out of an area, Canadian is your guy. I gave both teams their own world to tinker and explore and to try out different ideas. This way, they can come up with a solid battle plan to figure out what materials they will need to build a fortress, which they will need to gather themselves later on. Each of the teams came up with unique different strategies. If you come below their base, place a boat here, bed here, and if you right click that bed and jump in the void, you will respawn at the crystal. They began developing various defenses to see what may or may not work. What Wait, at our own base? Here. I was kind of demonstrating a common ender pearl defense. Blows you down just enough that pearl glitching is impractical. Meanwhile, Team A was working on their defense. Be that way. If it would... Oh, wait, oh, I what? see that. You right. can't mine honeycomb with any tool faster than a fist. How does it know when you break a block? Just constantly trying to push up, but it reaches the push limit. So as soon as the block is gone, it will try to push up. They also worked on wall defense too. I believe 1 minute 45 seconds around to get through, which is the slowest time we've had so far. In fact, they ran various tests to see which defense was better. While Team A was focusing on defense, Team B was focusing more on offense with these crazy player cannons designed by Mastermind Cat 7 After giving you invisibility and slow falling, they launch you over 100 blocks towards the enemy's base. These then launch players into a practice course designed by Canadian. These practice courses contain common defense matrices the enemies might use, allowing everyone else on the team to practice breaking through them. He also made kits with various items to help them break through everything. He invited me to try it out, so I did just that. This took me about 10 minutes, but for Canadian, it took him just three. Both teams kept working to see what was and wasn't practical. Team A tried this mechanic that made blocks impossible to break, but unfortunately it has its own weaknesses. They came up with more and more defense ideas, and soon enough, they built blueprints for their fortresses. However, these aren't final. That's because they will have just three days to grind all the materials to build the fortress in a separate world. Both teams will also have to share the same resource world, which means we will undoubtedly see some conflict. The final fortress will depend on how efficient they are with gathering the resources they need in the limited time frame. So with no time to waste, both teams got grinding. They all gathered the essentials as quickly as they could and then speed around going to the end. Right now, one big thing was on both teams' minds, end control. The end has a limited world border at 3000 by 3000 so there are only so many elytras within the borders. If any one team got an elytra first, they could then quickly fly around the end and find all the remaining elytras. Elytras will be extremely useful for the final battle and for scouting out the enemy's base. So Team B got to the end first, but unfortunately they got unlucky and Team A found one before them, which then led them to find all the remaining elytras. Even though this meant Team A would have elytras, Team B wasn't bothered by it all that much because they had their player cannons anyways. They also had another plan to scout out the enemy's base, but we'll get to that later on. So after the whole end kerfuffle, Team A and B each decided to regroup up and make a base for their operations. Team A already scouted out an Acacia Village earlier, so they decided to make that their main base. They also had a separate Spruce Village base. Team B decided to make their base at the Snow Village. The main goal for both teams was to gather all the resources they need to build their fortresses quickly. They each have access to a private storage receptacle allowing them to transfer materials from their current resource world to build with later on. Nothing put into this receptacle can be taken out of it until it's time to build the fortresses. So they built farms and traveled around the map to collect resources to build even more farms. Since they both made their bases at villages, they had plenty of villagers to trade with giving them all the best enchants within the first day. 
<sighs> what a perfectly balanced game. Team A made an iron and sheep farm while Team B made a bamboo farm, but one of the most important materials both teams really needed is obsidian. Although it is possible to farm with cauldrons and dripstone, it would be too slow to obtain the insane amount of obsidian they needed. Team A in particular needs over 150,000 blocks, which is just impossible in three days normally. But there's one way to farm so much obsidian so quickly, nothing even comes close. The end platform. I know what you're thinking, this really is not that much obsidian. However, when anything is thrown into an end portal, the end platform regenerates. So if you bait a snow golem to throw snowballs into the end with a mob like a silverfish, those snowballs will regenerate the end platform entirely. If you pair that with a wither, which is the only thing in the game that can blow up obsidian, it will constantly blow up the end platform, allowing an incredibly fast source of obsidian. Unfortunately, there's only one end platform, so whoever would get a wither first would have access to all the obsidian they would ever need. So both teams tried to speedrun getting wither skulls, but teammate got them all first. Now, they had control of the end platform, giving them all the obsidian they will ever need and leaving team B in the dust. So right now, Team B weren't doing very swimmingly. They were unable to obtain an elytra or gain control of the end platform, subsequently making them spend longer to find and gather resources and spend more of their own time trying to get obsidian. They could try to reclaim it, but that would mean challenging Team A head on, who already had far better resources than them at this point. So while they were already so far behind, they decided to start scouring for Team A's base. The world border in the overworld was at 4000 by 4000, which I did purposefully to force interactions. The spawn distance was at about 3000 by 3000, meaning you can respawn in a majority of the area. Canadian did some math and realized that if they constantly respawned, there was a 1 in 400 chance of respawning in the render distance of their base. And because Team A had multiple bases and a few farms scattered across the map, it would only be a bit of time until Team B found one of those bases and ransacked it. So Team B decided to delay their plans for the moment and focus solely on finding Team A's outpost. So while all of that was happening, one BMM was traveling to a gas farm he was building by flying through the nether until he found another portal which he knew nobody on his team built. By the way, I just found a portal uh, next to a fortress that's a bunch of random blocks placed, and I'm pretty sure it's the base. He was afraid it was trapped on the other side, so he decided to retreat for the time being to empty his inventory of anything valuable and to make invisibility potions to investigate their base. I'm gonna go scout their base in a second, which will be quite funny if uh, they see me, but I'm not gonna try to get seen. Just bring up some potions really quickly. I'll grow up a strength pot and a once one BMM prepared, he flew to their base on the overworld side to avoid any possible traps on the other side of the nether portal, and he began his covert mission to gather intel. Snow village. <gasps> oh my god. Is this their base? Should I land? I'm gonna go land on this glacier over here. Off my armor. Get my elytra ready. I can see my friend. <gasps> They're right there! He's full diamond. That sneaky guy. Sneaky, sneaky guy. He has no idea, dude. I wonder what he's doing. There he is. Kill the zombie. Oh, he's trying to sleep. Hmm. I don't know if I. Like, I want to get closer, but I don't want to risk him seeing me. What should I do? Should I go on the ground, maybe? Oh, wait, I think he's literally just sleeping right now. I'm gonna fly over here. I don't know if he saw that. I should probably back off actually before he sees that. There's three beds. That means there's probably three people here. Probably the oh. cat. Yeah. They have a very small potato farm. He's definitely trading with villagers, I think, in there. I have a minute left. I want to get lower down. But I don't know how to do it. Without taking damage. I'm gonna go ahead and drink this into this spot. Oh my god, it's so loud. I don't know if I should, like, do something. If I confront him, he's gonna move his base, most likely. Which is... bad. He left. He left. He left. I'm gonna wait a little bit. If he logs back on. If he logs back on over there, that's gonna be really good. Alright, I'm gonna get right on there. Interesting. They do have villagers. They look 
Toolsmith. They have a Fletcher. They're getting their armor for the Villager. That's what they're doing. Anything of interest. Poison arrows. That's all they have. They have two Villagers. I'm definitely sure they have more. I'm gonna look in their chests. See what they have. <gasps> what? What is all this? Other fine. I'm gonna take that. <laughs> I'm just gonna take it. They're not gonna know. They have more feather. They have more villagers. They definitely have more villagers somewhere. I don't know where they have it. I took one feather falling for it. I hope they don't mind. I'm gonna go to the actual village. This is very weird. I need wood. They wouldn't mind if I have. Uh... Snag three logs from here. Wait, what is this over here? There's beds here. This is an iron farm. But their water froze. This is literally the same exact design we used. No one saw that. I don't know where Yosh is. I assume he's probably in this area. Oh, I have three minutes left. I'm just gonna put back on my armor and get out of here. Because his invis was out, 1BMM decided to retreat for now. He wanted to wait longer before griefing it to investigate the base when they were offline and possibly figure out their plans for their fortress. If he could figure out what kind of defense they might be using, Victory would be assured as they can prepare specifically for it. But after just a few hours, Team B's respawn strategy yielded some results, to say the least. Good. Wait! Seacat is here! Seacat's at our base! What? They're here! They're here, they're here, they're here! I'm fighting them. I don't... To, uh, do I chase them? I, I don't know if I should chase them. I'm gonna see if I have my strength. Oh, I don't know what they took. They took... They took pretty much everything, I think. They took all of our shulker boxes. He died! He died! Get his stuff, get his stuff. Uh, he has all the shulker boxes. Oh my god, okay. Okay, I'm- I'm heading to you right now. I killed him again? Yeah, he set his spawn here. Do you know where Ken is? No, he swam away. Do you know where, where they are? Where they? I'm, I'm at the base. Where, where are they? I think they set their spawn in the base. I don't know. He came out of the wall somewhere. I think. Do you I mean, know what direction Ken went? Do you know what? Cor I yes, I know. I'm chasing. I'm chasing him right now. I am chasing him. He went. He went. He went toward our Nether portal. I think he found our Nether portal. Okay, you're gonna chase him. I'm gonna go to their base. Okay, I don't think they found the Nether portal. There's no blocks working in here. I'm gonna give you all the all of our shoulder boxes of stuff really quickly. Okay, I don't know- I'm not gonna be able to steal anything, but, um, I will be able to get rid of it. I found Ken! I found Ken! Where, 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 where? I'll help you, I'll help you. He probably has a trick up his sleeve. He was just in full diamond, that's all he was in. Where, where are you? Quartz, now. Quartz, Quartz! Just I'm at the up. base! Yeah, he's at the- he's at the base? Yeah, they're both here! What is it? He's in iron armor, though. Okay, okay, okay. I'm on my way. I got Ken's dead. You got him. Dead. Okay, good, 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 good. And burn the rest. Oh, he's here, he's here. They're here, they're here, they're, they're here. Back. They're here. Yeah. Okay, they spawned over here, they spawned over here. I'm gonna look for their bed. You secure the stuff, get what's good, burn the rest. Where are they spawning? They're spawning over here. Wait, what? They don't even have a bed. They're just spawning here. They can just spawn over. Squilly, Squilly. Oh my God, I knew it. I knew it. They're using Squilly. What's that? It's a glitch that hides your bed. I'm going down to it. I'm going down to it. I broke it. We could have spawn trapped them, but I don't think we have the materials to do that. All right, they're gone. Dude, that was so smart on their part. I I knew what that glitch is. We gotta move though. They probably spawned somewhere random, so we have time to go to their base and explode it now. saying, can we have our armor back? I'm burning all of their stuff. In a fit of rage, 1BMM decided to destroy their loot.
Although Team A managed to recover some shulkers, the damage was done. Team B already got and stored most of their valuable loot. But let's rewind a bit to Team B's perspective before Team A found them at their base and see what really happened. Uh, I don't think they would have just casually built a sheep farm this big if their base is oh. nearby. Yoshi MC found a sheep farm with the respawn strategy and tipped his team off about it. He obviously had no gear, so he wanted to tell his teammates who had gear to investigate to see if their base was nearby. That's because 1BMM was always online and nobody knew when he was AFK or actually playing. I'm scared they're gonna come by while I'm stuck in the sheep farm. <laughs> there's a village! There's there's one right there! Wait, do you it's think blocked. that's theirs? This is it, this is it. Do you think this is their village? Yeah, for sure. Oh my god. Ah, what do we do? You just slowly shift over there. Uh oh, you know. oh, they're enchanting. So we should we... set our spawn. Okay, 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 okay. Can you do that thing where we spawn the do the block? Uh, yeah, yeah. That's right, the glitch Canadian showed me earlier would be the glitch you would use to confuse Team A. This glitch is called Squilly, as it was discovered by the YouTuber named Squilly. You got it set? So we'll spawn up there, I believe? Yeah, yeah. Oh, they have a chorus fruit farm. This is absolutely their base, there's no way they would just have a chorus fruit farm. Do we go down? Yeah, we don't see anyone. What is this? Do oh. We, oh. It's a base. It's a base. They're ancient debris! Wait, wait, shoot! Oh my gosh! <gasps> Dude, I'm taking all their coal. Yeah, take it all, take it all. I'm taking it Where's all, the and I'm gonna immediately deposit it. Where should we put the gunpowder? It, is, it is permanently ours. Why do they have It's full of gunpowder. We need this. It's full- wait, what? Full of gunpowder. That's Look full of this. gunpowder?! Look at this! Oh my god! Send it, send it, just deposit it. I don't even care where. That is perfect. Wait, wait, how much gunpowder did we need? That might be enough. We okay. might not even need our own farm. Oh, gosh. They oh my gosh, we found the literal jackpot. Can we just grab all this stuff? Yeah, just take everything. Grab all the filters. We, I mean, it's too late anyway. They have, they have all these gas tiers? Are they cheating? How? Stacks of coarse fruit? Man, we are... We are too like this. Two of Elytra? We are- Ah, what the heck? <laughs> what the heck? It looks so bad. Why did they not deposit that? They've got a stack of- Why are they not depositing Dude. things? Okay, listen, like, this is their fault. This is- Look, that, look how should... many diamonds are there. They should be depositing this. This is, like, what the heck are they doing? Not depositing all their stuff. They've got a- What are these all- We are- We are criminally lucky. It's just not even Bro, there. we shouldn't take everything. I feel kind of bad. I don't- Breaking bow. We'll take your brewing thing, why not? Just run them dry. Should we kill- We should- Look at this sign, look at this sign. Can we do it? We killed Joe! And he dropped a pearl! Dude, can we make an item frame? They have an item frame. Wait, let me, let me get this sign. Oof. <laughs> Pumpkin? I don't know what else we need here. There's so many potatoes. We don't even need it, but we can mine them. Here. Can we put, like, lol in one of their chests or something? 1BM just saw me. Bro. Run. Oh, oh, shoot. He's here. Run. <laughs> Bye, nerd! <laughs> they got their filter boxes back, but not any of the good ones. Just the drop one. Yep, yep. Honestly. Do we just go back into their base and just take care? I made. A, I need some better armor, so might as well. They're not in it right now. Wait, where is IBM? Anyway, did he just leave? Yes, I know. I'm chasing. I'm chasing him right now. He went. He went. He went toward our Nether portal. Man's just letting us raid his base some more. I'm just gonna keep taking more stuff. I'll take the health potions if you don't mind. Do you think they know about the open chest command? Because you want to actually try getting up on him. You might need. Right. I don't armor. have anything. Oh, there he is. He just flew by. He just flew by. He's running. Yeah, you don't want to lose your leech there, bud. Should I just stand oh, in front of him? Should I just, like, though. stand by him? Dude. Yoink this stuff and leave again! <laughs> just keep going, keep going, keep going. Frenzy, see what we can salvage. They don't know where our bed is. They're not going to find it. Don't even fight him. Don't even fight him. Don't even fight him. Just stand here. Just stand. They are bewildered. Yeah, go, fine. Come on. Come on down to our bed. 
Look at my dad. Brandon from Team A actually worked with Canadian on some of his prison projects as they are both prison builders, hence how he knew what Squilly was. <laughs> they broke it. Alright, nice. I'm not even mad. <laughs> I'm not. That went great. <laughs> Maybe. You goofed, man. Wait, us? We goofed? We goofed? <laughs> I think that went exactly how we expected. That it went better than I could have ever imagined. Can we have our armor back? <laughs> You're making us sound poor. Yeah, I'm on my way to your base. No way. Oh no, he's going to our base. This is when one BMM proceeded to go to their base, and was where we left off at. Everything we have that's actually good is an open chest. Team B not knowing their base was already found was quite surprised, but in the end, they had the last laugh. Team A was very hesitant to store anything in the storage receptacle in case they needed something, but that backfired on them. Thankfully for them though, they had their Spruce Village base which already had some farms and villagers so they could relocate easily. But once 1BMM inspected the damage after the raid, he became so furious he decided to go to Team B's base yet again, and this time completely destroy anything of use to Team B. So he prepared at the Spruce base and headed out. Right now, Ken and Seacat returned back to their base very confused and armorless because 1BMM destroyed it all earlier, which is very inconvenient when he came along again and decided to fight them both. Why, they didn't even break our bed. I know, that's what I'm saying. They broke thinking. their beds, right? He Wait, was definitely do you think they just like a creeper blew it up or something somehow? Are we even sure they did this? If this was them, they did a super bad job. Yep, I found their base again. I'm killing everything. I'm not going easy anymore. Don't know what that zombie was there for. Don't know what this is here for. I don't care. He's here. He's chasing me. Trying to kill me. I don't know why. And he just broke a bed. And it's the bed I have my spawn set on. I'm gonna actually double check that it's there. Okay. He remember this one. Okay, well, Yo, that doesn't. Stop, stop, bro. You stay. Bro, why are you even killing me? I've, I've got nothing on me. Oh, he's like rage killing me. Bye. I'm not okay. even like. Come, come, calm down, bud. He's gone. I'm burning their stuff right now. And I'm gonna kill their villagers. They had a bed here too. It's gone. No, they have the gas tears, dude. One BMM continued to destroy everything in their base that was of use to Team B. But the worst part for Team A was the two Elytras which were stolen by Seacat7. They conveniently had an Ender Chest lying around in their base, so Seacat managed to keep them in the Ender Chest to access later on, along with other goodies they stole. Now, Team B was able to travel quickly around the map like Team A did. The large advantage Team A had at this point had crumbled, but they still had their spruce base, right? Well, let's just say that Team A goofed. They goofed real hard, and nobody could have guessed how until Seacat told me after the event. And it is one of the most insane things I've ever seen in my years of witnessing game exploits. And trust me, I've had some experience with those. Seacat invited me to his redstone world to take a look at how he did it. So assuming that 1BM tried to shoot us and missed with their terrible aim, all you'd have to do to catch the arrow So now it's in stasis and it won't despawn. Oh, I might steal this for a lag machine. So then, to get it into the system, you'd have to build this thing below it, and then you can just drop it on. And then all you have to do is just activate the TNT with the arrow, and all of the entities will go in the opposite direction of the player. I told Seacat to leave his arrow here and fly far, far away from here to try tracking him myself. I blew up the TNT with the arrow and went the opposite direction where the mobs were knocked back by. And sure enough, I found him. That's because TNT lit by an arrow will always knock back nearby entities in the opposite direction of the player who threw the arrow, even if they've moved since. It doesn't even matter how far away they are, it will still work, even if they're far out of your render distance. So literally just leaving his arrow at Team B's base left them vulnerable for another attack. I can already see the FitMC video about this. And unfortunately for 1BMM, he happened to be at the spruce space when they used the exploit. So now that they knew where the spruce space was, they decided to be a little bit more incognito about it. Although they got many valuables from the initial base raid, one thing they really needed was iron. In order to bring a lot of lava into the final battle, you need a lot of buckets, which means a lot of iron. 
Lava is essential for defense, so they decided to carry it over. They attempted to make an iron farm at their base, but that didn't work. However, Team A happened to have a nice little iron farm sitting in the open producing a metric buttload of iron. Why would they need to build a totally new iron farm if Team A already had one that they can mooch off of? This time around, Team A made sure to store all of their valuables into the storage receptacle to prevent a situation like last time, so there wasn't much to take from the base but the iron. Seacat7 did a clever trick and rerouted the hoppers to go into a secret chest underneath the farm when nobody was on Team A online, allowing him to take iron without Team A noticing iron magically disappearing from their chest. This way, they will think the farm is somehow broken, but soon enough, one VMM became suspicious. He realized there is no iron coming out of the iron farm despite it seeming functional. He also noticed the crops were missing, and it was especially clear to him that their base was found again. The funny thing was that there were signs beforehand, but nobody took them seriously. Did anyone put a dark oak plank in front of a door? It was too late for them though, because not only did they seal the massive amount of iron blocks Team A already had, they got even more iron from the chest underneath. Now they have sabotaged Team A yet again wasting more of their time. One VMM being completely tired of all this decided to just fly away from the base and start a new one. He was so tired, he just let out a sigh and moved on with his life, and just let Team B have the base. And they had it alright. They continued to actually live at the base, all while Team A assumed that they would leave it after being found, but no, they took advantage of it. Oh, also seek Cat happened to find the gas farm by sheer coincidence with how much they've been traveling across the map, and stole even more gunpowder and gas tiers. So now Team A decided to set up a villager station at a completely different village. They set up more farms to get more different resources, like a gold farm and an ender pearl farm. They continued to grind resources like sand that they would need for the final battle. For Team B, this meant getting endstone because it was cheap in the end and it was blast resistant. They found a different stronghold this time and used that to get materials, but 1BMM knew a stronghold opened up when he heard the sound. and decided to search for it. But when he went into the stronghold, he found a bed. He knew nobody on his team who placed it, so he did the most logical thing he could think of, which was to bed trap it. A bed trap is basically a structure built around a bed designed to constantly kill the player whenever they respawn. It covers the entire spawn radius of the bed and leaves a little hole for the player to spawn in, which is filled with lava, only to die again, and again, and again. These became big on 2v2t, as being bed trap makes you totally helpless. The only way to get out of one is if someone else breaks it for you, so although this is impractical for the long term, 1BMM felt like he could waste their time anyways. But by some sheer coincidence, Canadian happened to log on all while 1BMM was working on bed trapping his bed. The encounter was hilarious, to say the least. Oh, nice. He's loading in still. What? Yeah, that corner I was talking about. Okay, he's trapped. No, I'm, I'm on the respawn screen right now. So oh, I what? can actually see what he's doing. Like, I can see him mining. My bed is surrounded by obsidian. He's, he is basically just spawn killing me, probably out of rage <laughs> for finding his base last time. <laughs> What's that sub Canadian? Oh my gosh. I can see him mining. Why is he mining? How much obsidian is he putting? Holy crap. Oh, can you see it? Yeah. <laughs> He's still going. So how is the uh, legendary Canadian going to get out of this? I'm going to ask for help. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Is that, are you really surrendering that quickly? <laughs> Bro, you can't get out of just lava. <laughs> I don't have items. So um, I'm sure. going to get out of here. Yeah, you're good. Whatever. Get out of here. I'm breaking it's this now. Why put obsidian on the corners? Oh my god. <laughs> they don't understand anything. You want to mine this obsidian? I mean, it's just free obsidian. You just give it a bit. 1BMM knew that because Team B gained a sudden interest in the end, they would probably want their obsidian too. Team B was scared to take obsidian earlier because Team A was much further ahead of them, but now the tables have turned. Team A is scared of Team B now. Team A wasn't able to secure enough obsidian just yet, so 1BMM decided to set up Brandbert's account to crouch AFK in the end as a kind of security camera to listen to any footsteps and try to catch anyone in the act. Brandbert had an IRL emergency to attend to, so he gave 1BMM his login and had to drop out for the rest of the resources 
phase, but Team B was never in the end while 1BMM was using his computer. But it's not like they never went to the end though, because Canadian was leeching off of that too. 1BMM was on practically all the time, but it was impossible for him to be on every waking hour of the day, and when he saw 1BMM log off, he had to take advantage of it. <gasps> they're just going to notice that they're getting a lot less obsidian than they, than they expected to get. He grabbed double chests after double chests of obsidian and stored it into his storage receptacle. If, th if they catch on, you tell them that we're not stealing it, we're just borrowing it. <laughs> we're just borrowing it. <laughs> Oh, we accidentally put it in our open chest, we can't give it back, sorry. Since he left the farm running overnight, he actually didn't think too much about being some obsidian short so they never found out, mostly because the farm was so fast. But since Team B's design used less obsidian than Team A's, they already had enough. So anyways, do you remember when Team B stole all of Team A's iron? Well, Team A made a totally new iron farm and prayed it would last long enough to get all the iron they needed. Well, when 1BMM was about to sleep, he noticed something odd, which was Seacat7 killing Brandbert, who was AFK at the iron farm. Team A thankfully reached their goal, and since they actually made sure to store it before it was stolen, nothing was really lost. 1BMM was just about to sleep though, so if Seacat waited just a minute, he might have been able to kill 1BMM. So the next day, he decided to continue getting sand, but he happened to find something weird there. I mean, I guess we do have one base. Yeah, we do have one base that's still out in the open if you want to find it. Uh, there's nothing there, but you can, you can, you can find it. Oh, you're literally here right now. Hey, what's up? Funny enough, they happen to be on a voice call. What's up, Dan? What's up, man? You're literally here. What's up? <laughs> Die. I wonder how he got there. I actually don't know how he got there. I don't like uh, it was luck. One BMM was confused about how weird his luck was, but the desert he was mining at and their iron farm was relatively close to the spruce base, which started to make him think if they really abandoned it after all. Team B was very careful with their elytros or anything valuable as they didn't want to die and lose them, so they couldn't have traveled far. So he decided to check it out, and his hunch was correct. You're here. Please don't do this. One BMM decided to finish the job off and get rid of them and the base. I just upgraded my bow, you're dead. Okay, well, I'm gonna burn everything now. Including the villagers! The villagers- oh, hi. The villagers are gonna die now, by the way, and it's all your fault. I don't- I don't care about them. Just leave us alone. I have been leaving you alone. You're the ones that have been coming after me, okay? Come down. Hi. No. Yeah, all these villagers are dead, by right. the way. Why are you basing in my base? Like, what is your problem? Every time we finally become happy, you come and destroy Dang. everything. Dude, listen to me. You guys have raided our base. This is what, three times now? I have personally only raided your base one time, and there was a very good reason it is. Well, fun fact, I'm burning all of my stuff too, so you can't have it either. So 1BMM briefed everything of use at the spruce base, stopping Team B from using it. They only used basic armor because losing their diamonds and netherite meant they wouldn't have it in the final battle, which is far more important than any drama that goes down in the resource world. So after having their home destroyed yet again, Team B wanted to see if Team A had an ender pearl farm. While they secured many resources when they raided Team A's base, they never got many ender pearls, which are required to make end crystals. End crystals would be vital for winning the final battle, so they decided to steal it from Team A. Because Team A made a gas farm, they knew they were going to make end crystals crystals, and to make those, Team B knew that they had to have an ender pearl farm somewhere. So versus Dan, Canadian, and Seacat all decided to try and totally grid scan the end, but their plans were faulted when versus Dan got the achievement. Uh, I think I know where they are. Got that. Uh, that's, uh, that's a bit suspicious. See, he basically spent the whole event so far exclusively getting wood, and never actually went to the end. It was midnight, so Team B was hoping 1BMM was just AFK, but unfortunately not. He was going to get his revenge on them for griefing quite literally everything. The thing is, if we hop in right now, they might know that we're gonna be there. Actually, yeah. it's totally chill. It's totally chill. Let's just go. <gasps> He's uh, in the end! I gotta go fast, dude! As far as they know, only Dan's here. I'm not gonna get there in time, I'm like super far away. Go in! I don't see anyone. Okay, 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 okay. That's real. That's yeah. real. Go, 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 go! Yeah, I'm just gonna go through it. They're all here! Oh my gosh, I knew it, I knew it, I absolutely knew it. They're all here! They're all here! They're all here! I can kill them, I can kill them. Are they gonna try to run back? 
Okay, go back to the go back to the portal. Go back to go back to go back to. Oh man. It's okay, I might die. I'm gonna die anyways. They're going through it. I'm just gonna kill Dan. I'm sorry. Oh, he died to an enderman. <laughs> that was, I mean, don't... Should I go through the gateway or should I fly back? They might be waiting for me. One BMM is a highly skilled PvPer, so they couldn't even begin to challenge him with just iron armor. Oh, he's here. Alright, that's fine, that's fine. I got through. Kill cat! Kill cat! Yes! Okay, the other one, one of them went through, one of them went through. Shall I just burn it? They don't have anything valuable. Oh, you, you died? Yeah. How'd you, you didn't get through in time? No. You both died. After killing two of them, he decided to trap the end spawn. He also reinstated Brandbert's account in the end. It's just a pumpkin. And that turned out to be a good move. That's because it finally heard something. So he decided to travel to the end and kill them. Oh, you actually, it's actually out here. Yo, yeah. what's up? Okay. There he is. So when Team B saw him, they knew they had to be crafty to survive. Here, you get in the hole. Uh, for what reason? It's a fun game. Dude, what are you gonna do, man? I know you're gonna do get something. It's safe, it's all lit up. Seacat wanted to trick him so he can get just a bit closer, so he decided to act friendly with him in order to lure him within bed bombing range. You could be playing like 200 egg here right now, trying to bait me, but I, I can't tell. Oh, not again! Alright, you're doing this on purpose. Stand in the hole. <laughs> <laughs> so demanding. No, oh, my armor. No, oh, my durability. What? You guys are scheming right now. There's prop 4. Okay, your guys are trying to kill me with explosives right now. I know you have TNT. I'm gonna stay away from you guys. I'm gonna. Okay, listen, man. If you come within five blocks of me, I'm gonna create you. Yeah, I'll break the line. Really quickly. It took some time, but eventually he got fairly close. That's that's obsidian. It is obsidian. You are so. Stupid. Oh my God, cat! <laughs> cat! <laughs> You should have I forgot game. about beds. I was actually really smart. I'm gonna kill Dan now. No, 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 no. It was a troll. I knew it wasn't gonna kill you. I'm sorry, man. It's gotta be done. No, not Dan. Dan didn't do anything. No. Unfortunately, his armor was too good. One BMM killed the rest of them, feeling totally betrayed. He returned to the end island and was tapped out for a moment. But Sea Cat came back to get his revenge. Thankfully for him, he had a totem so he didn't die. See, Cat and 1BMM barely escaped with their life. So with both teams just mentally exhausted, for the last day, I decided to bump the world border up some and let them focus on grinding whatever they were missing at this point. Both teams immigrated to new bases and hid them carefully. Team A built it at the bottom of a cave and transported villagers into it. Team B built theirs underground. They spent the last day grinding materials and focusing. Team B finally bit the dust and decided to make farms to get the remaining materials, like a mob farm and their own enderman farm, as they've never found Team A's farm. Luckily, there were no more encounters for either team, and before they knew it, the build phase began. They could now access the materials they collected earlier and begin constructing their fortresses on the final battle world. I decided to supply them with some extra building materials for the exterior to decorate their fortress with. Just because it's hard to convince them to get the extra materials they'll need to make their fortress look cool on such a tight schedule, it doesn't affect the defense, so it's not like it gives an unfair advantage. Look, I'm a YouTuber, how am I supposed to commentate on two black boxes? So anyways, soon enough, both teams got building.
Chris, meet Team A's base, a giant castle designed by Riri. This base is the ultimate defensive fortress designed to keep anything outside of it. Starting from the top, we tried a lot of roof defenses, and they were either not good enough, or they were too expensive to get in survival. So what we did was, we just had it solid obsidian for about maybe 20 layers, I think, which takes about a minute to mine through the whole way, going straight down. Instead of trying to uh, counter it, what we did was have a pearl glitch set up here, where you can see through the walls, and you can see any tunnels being mined. Oh my god, I can see you! So now the wall defense. We also tried a lot of these, and what we ended up going for was we wanted some combination of sand, lava, water, and obsidian. Every other layer, there is pure sand, which when you mine it, it will fall down and replenish the block, unless you have like a torch or something, but point of the lava and water is to kind of get rid of the torches and then for the interior of the base we just have our beds here we had chests of um, just extra gear so that if someone died they could come back maybe restock a bit and th we had soul speed on our on our boots so there was soul sands here going down to the directly underneath the crystal this one was like kind of a mining defense going upwards if we go down a little more we see the cobwebs originally we wanted to do it across the entire floor however that was like way too expensive so with the cobwebs we did have we used it on the middle area and we just left the other ones as air now if you've been wondering why i haven't shown team b's fortress at all in this video well, needless to say, this one will never let you down. Designed by Coriolis, the space is undeniably the prettiest one out of the two. In its own way, at least. Alright, so the first and most important defense is distraction. We've pasted four massive collages of Rick Astley's face in order to deceive and distract the enemy. It'll buy us just a little bit more time to get to their base. After that, we basically followed the same principle that Bed Wars players will use to defend their bed, having the cheapest and weakest defenses on the outside and the strongest on the inside. So the first defense is just solid lava. If they do have fire resistance, that's fine, because the next defense is an alternating pattern, water and lava columns, such that if you try mining through it, the water and lava will combine together. It's basically just a wall made out of cobblestone generators. After that, we have layers of solid obsidian, and on top we have not one, not two, but three layers of bubble column. If you end up mining into bubble elevators, even if you have a Litra, you won't be able to fly out of it, and you'll basically be stuck. Bottom, we have alternating layers of cobblestone and lava, so if anyone tries mining up or pearl glitching up, they'll get stuck in these, these one block tall spaces full of lava. And of course, our second most powerful defense, the Great Stop sign. We're hoping if someone pearl glitches from below and looks down, they'll see the stop sign and stop. <laughs> this is the room where the defense should get serious because the last defenses, as we've seen in our training course, you can get through in like two minutes. That's just to slow them down. This is the room where we actually want to stop them. So instead, the next defense is guards. We're going to put as many players as we can in this room who will be watching every single wall. And as a bonus, every single wall is made out of sand. So no matter where you mine in from, the players will instantly be able to see where you're breaking in and hopefully kill you before you mine into the obsidian dome in the center. After that, uh, we've defended the we've defended the crystal itself with the most expensive and most powerful defense we know depending on what tools they have you have to keep switching back and forth between two tools not only is it inconvenient to switch between more tools but the water sources keep regenerating water in front of you hopefully slowing you down enough that if you're burrowed in our guards can mine back into you and stop you now admittedly since we didn't get a lot of obsidian the defense is probably lacking however defense is not our main objective. It's offense, because this whole game is about who can get to the other person's crystal faster. And in that, we think we have the lead. Because of our player cannons, and it uses about 50 TNT, I think. Why does it say Horizon is racist? So this this cannon was designed by Cat. It uses about 50 TNT and oh opens a secret God, hatch wow. in the ceiling. Launches a player 
up into the air with slow falling and invisibility and then closes the hatch so the enemy can't see where we came from. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, so just to make uh, our guard force even more optimized, this room basically ensures that we can keep sending the guards back over and over again. Once you respawn from this bed, you can get everything in all of these chests. And then you can use this ladder right here uh, to pearl glitch. You just need two ender pearls and you'll be back in the death pit, ready to fight again. Also, I should probably add that both teams have the exact same defense size underneath all of the decoration. This will be a fair battle. The final battle was now nearing and players were coming on. Unfortunately, Yoshi MC of Team B is <coughs> Australian, so he can come on. He was busy being asleep. And Riri, who just forgot. So I let both teams choose any one Minecraft player to participate in the final battle to sub in for them. Team A chose none other than only a squid to participate. Only a squid is one of Minecraft's best PvPers. There couldn't be a better choice for them. Team B enlisted Ant, yet another PvP or an SMP player. So now, after getting everyone up to speed, both teams did their final preparations for battle. So now it's actually happening. The battle phase. All of the time and hours put in by all of the members would be put to test. I also brought in Duper Trooper to help keep track of everything with me. Here. We. Go. Um. Okay, is everyone ready? Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. Okay. Three. Two. One. Which I direction? love Red. <laughs> 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 yes! That's amazing. That's amazing. That's amazing. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> that is. That's a defense. Oh, here, here's the first one. Brandbird is flying. Oh my god! What? what? That is. Those are the player cannons. Bro, he's soaring! Okay, oh, he pearly, 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 pearly. Right now. Oh, oh, he missed. He oh. missed his ender pearl. He's uh -oh. doing another one. Oh, he missed. He missed all his pearls. Okay, it looks like um they're trying to penetrate the defense right now. Oh my god! They're going Wait. in. They're just going ham. I can't see through all these bubbles. Dude, no, nobody's inside of red space yet. Oh wait, I see one. I see one. I see one. Here, TP to me. Oh, this guy right oh, in. He's right. He's in. He's in. The bubble columns. They're making. They're. He's stuck. He can't move. Man, Dude, I'm actually it, like right? genuinely not sure he's gonna win. Okay, and I have yeah. tracers, so now I can see like which team is at which area. Squid is. Oh, squid turned on invis. Oh shoot. Okay, red is like above the bit. Oh. Oh no. I think red might have discovered the cannon. While all of that was happening, Team A was distracting the guards on one side, while Master Ugwe was flanking them on the other. Now, Master Ugwe snuck through their last layer of defense. Would they catch on? Wait, what? Did something happen? Oh, shoot. Looks like Team B lost. In the end, Team A won. Team B might have put up a good fight and had their fair share of laughs, but Team A were the ones who had the final one. But this isn't the end. This won't be the last video like this I'll do, and I need your help. My next video will involve a few more people. Let's just say about a thousand more. And for that, I need every person possible that can join and be in my upcoming video. That means you. I need everyone's help for this. It will be a 10v1000 in a similar fashion to this video, so join my Discord down below. If you are a talented Minecrafter and want to be a part of the 10 players fighting all 1000, join that Discord and fill out the Google form application I have there. If you know someone that is skilled at anything in Minecraft, send them this form and who knows, they might get into my next video. I need as many people as possible to help me with this, including you, my dear viewer. I want to give a shout out to the guys that were too busy grinding to worry about the drama I covered in the video. Both teams would basically be nothing without them. Thank you all so much for watching. I spent over 5 months on this video, so if I managed to entertain you for like 50 minutes, a 5 second subscription would be very awesome. With school and all, it'll probably be a minute till I can upload again. But I'll be streaming on Twitch a lot, especially if you're a fan of Geometry Dash. Oh, and follow me on Twitter, I guess. See ya.